This story happened 357 years ago, day to day. In the year 1666, London was a bustling metropolis, teeming with life and commerce. Its narrow streets were lined with wooden houses, their thatched roofs stretching toward the sky. The city was a tinderbox waiting for a spark, and that spark was about to come. It all began on a warm summer night in early September. A baker named Thomas Farriner had gone to bed after a long day of work. He lived on Pudding Lane in the heart of London. Unbeknownst to him, a small fire smoldered in his bakery's oven. The embers, left unattended, grew hotter and brighter as the night wore on. As the clock struck midnight, a passerby noticed the flickering flames through the bakery's window. Panic ensued as the alarm was raised, and Londoners rushed to the scene. They desperately tried to douse the flames with buckets of water, but the fire had already taken hold of the dry, wooden structure. The fire spread rapidly from Pudding Lane, leaping from building to building. London's narrow streets, lined with houses crammed together, provided the perfect conditions for the inferno to flourish. The wind that night acted as a merciless accomplice, fanning the flames and pushing them in every direction. The frantic efforts of London's citizens to contain the fire were in vain. As the fire raged on, it devoured everything in its path. It roared through the city, consuming homes, shops, and warehouses filled with valuable goods. The heat was so intense that it melted lead roofs and even ignited the river's surface, which oozed with blazing oil from warehouses along the Thames. Despite the best efforts of the city's firefighters, who used primitive equipment like leather buckets and water pumps, the Great Fire of London continued its devastating march. The city's inhabitants had to flee, leaving behind their homes and possessions, as the relentless blaze destroyed everything in its wake. As dawn broke on the second day of the fire, King Charles II himself arrived to assess the situation. Seeing the extent of the disaster, he ordered the creation of fire breaks by demolishing buildings in the fire's path. This desperate measure finally halted the inferno's advance. After three days and four nights of devastation, the Great Fire of London was finally extinguished. By then, it had laid waste to a substantial portion of the city, leaving tens of thousands homeless and numerous landmarks in ashes. Miraculously, only a few lives were lost in the disaster. The city of London, however, would rise from the ashes stronger than ever before. The Great Fire prompted a radical transformation of the city's urban planning and building regulations. Out went the narrow wooden streets, replaced by wider avenues and brick buildings. In the end, the Great Fire of 1666 Sussex was a catastrophe that forever changed London's landscape and contributed to the city's growth and evolution. It became a symbol of resilience and the indomitable spirit of the people of London, who rebuilt their beloved city from the ground up, creating the modern metropolis we know today.